the monolateral external fixation system for trauma and orthopedics, in short, Mephisto. Mephisto can be used for fractures and injuries of the entire musculoskeletal system and complex indications in reconstructive and orthopedic surgery, such as bone lengthening, segment transport, and angulation. This exercise will be performed on a transverse fracture of the tibia in the middle third of the shaft. Four cell drill shunt screws will be used. Two standard clamps, through which normally two to a maximum of four shunt screws of four to six millimeters can be inserted. One radiolucent carbon fiber tube with a diameter of 22 millimeters two end caps, and an Allen key with T-handle. Mephisto is a modular system with six degrees of freedom. The shunt screws can be placed freely in pairs. In order to fully understand this, each group of shunt screws is placed in each main fragment separately, and then the reduction is performed, rather than doing the fixation after the reduction. The benefits of this are a free choice of where to position the shunt screws, reduction without contact and pressure to the skin and soft tissues, easier and faster reduction manipulations, which are gentler on the tissue, and a minimization of radiation for both the surgeon and the patient. For the exercise, the tibial head is first clamped into the vise. Should the trauma pattern not demand otherwise, the recommended positions for the shunt screws are either outside the attachment of the ligamentum patellae on the tibial tuberosity or in the area of the anteromedial tibial surface, ventral to the musculature. The shunt screws can be inserted through a parallel drill sleeve holder, the whole configuration of which corresponds to that of the standard clamp or through the drill sleeve assembly, available in two lengths and diameters. The first shunt screw can now be inserted. On it, the parallel drill sleeve holder can later be aligned. As an alternative, the parallel drill sleeve fitted with two drill sleeve assemblies can be used from the start. Once the near cortex has been penetrated, Beginners are recommended to remove the power drill and insert the screw into the far cortex manually using the universal chuck with T-handle in order to prevent penetration of the far cortex. Length measurement will not be necessary. Thanks to the geometry of the cell drill shunt screws, their tip only needs to be drilled into the far cortex without perforating it completely. A conical step on the core of the screw causes radial preloading. The result is better anchorage compared with conventional screws. The universal chuck with T-handle and the drill sleeve are removed. The prepared parallel drill sleeve holder with the drill sleeve assembly set apart at the desired distance is slid over the first shunt screw. For the cell drill shunt screws, the drill sleeve and trocar are removed. For conventional shunt screws, the hole must be pre-drilled through the drill sleeve. The second shunt screw is inserted and the parallel drill sleeve removed. The shunt screws are inserted into the distal fragment in the same way. The position of the inner malleolus and the medial tibia have to be noted since there is no fibula on the model. Experience shows that it's better to insert the shunt screws outside the course of the anterior tendons. This significantly reduces the risk of pin infection, improves the implant's function, and considerably increases the patient's comfort. So today it's recommended with all external fixators and for the modular Mephisto that implantation be performed in the medial portion of the distal fragment between the anterior tendons and the dorsal musculature. The positioning of the shunt screws in the distal fragment using the alternative method is now demonstrated with the parallel drill sleeve holder already fitted with two drill sleeve assemblies. It's up to the surgeon which method is appropriate.
The two pairs of parallel shunt screws have been placed in the best possible area of the proximal and distal main fragments. The carbon fiber tube with standard clamps is now attached to the shunt screws and fixed at the appropriate distance by tightening the fixing screws. All other screws, and with them all degrees of freedom, shall remain open for the reduction. All further manipulations are made considerably easier by using adjustable reduction grips, which are mounted onto the parallel shunt screws. They also allow the surgeon and assistants to keep their hands well away from the x-rays emitted by the image intensifier. The grips can be mounted onto the protruding ends of the shunt screws and fixed in place. They can be adjusted at any angle. If the soft tissue situation allows it, the grips are best positioned almost parallel to the bone. This way it's easier to achieve the right feel for the main fragment. The grip then is tightened in the desired position. It's recommended that one assistant holds his or her grip more or less still while the surgeon performs the major manipulations, in this case on the distal fragment. The system allows movements in all six degrees of freedom, which make it possible to perform a completely free and careful reposition in only a few reduction steps. Holding the reduction, the central screw in the saddle joint of both clamps and the screw in the main body of the standard clamp are tightened for final fixation. The central screw is located in the slot-shaped opening on the standard clamp. The other screw is on the gray main body of the standard clamp through which the carbon fiber tube is placed. The reduction grips are removed. To increase stability with an additional shunt screw outside the standard clamps, open single pin clamps can be added at any position needed. Using the drill sleeve assembly, a shunt screw can be inserted through the vice plate of the clamp in any position and at any angle. Fractures can also be treated with the central body, which is applied as well in reconstructive and orthopedic surgery for various indications. With the central body, both compression and distraction can be achieved. Distraction by 7.5 centimeters on each side, resulting in a total of 15 centimeters. At one end, the central body can be dynamized from 0 to 5 millimeters.
Here it can be seen that with the central body, it's possible to close a remaining gap. Lengthening will be demonstrated on a femur with a distal corticotomy. The same principle can be used for subtrochanteric corticotomies and corticotomies in the tibia. First, two parallel shunt screws are inserted using the parallel drill sleeve holder. Then a standard clamp is mounted on the shunt screws. The central body with the pre-mounted second standard clamp is pushed through the main body of the clamp and aligned parallel to the longitudinal axis of the bone. Depending on the situation, this position can already be definitely fixed by tightening the central screw in the saddle joint and the screw in the main body. The shunt screws in the other fragment can be inserted directly through the drill sleeves mounted in the second clamp or mounted in the parallel drill sleeve holder. The second standard clamp is tightened to the shunt screws and the central body. Normally, the corticotomy can be performed at the desired site without removing the central body. In this exercise, it will be carried out with an oscillating saw. In a clinical situation, chisels are usually used and saws only as an exception. The bone can be lengthened at both ends of the central body. The patient will do it himself, using the end facing him. One full rotation corresponds to one millimeter. The millimeters are marked in four single steps per millimeter on the distraction disc of the central body, indicated as one to four. The lengthening distance can also be read from a scale on the spline shaft of the central body. Lengthening of up to 15 centimeters can be achieved. Segment transport will be shown on the tibia model. The required components of the Mephisto system are the threaded spline shaft, the sleeve for segment transport, a standard clamp, a two-piece sleeve, a second standard clamp, and a second two-piece sleeve. For the tibial head, a prepared T assembly with additional vice plate for a third shunt screw is needed. This set is put together in a logical fashion. For this exercise, the tibia is fixed in the vise. A distal defect will be treated by performing a distal resection. Two shunt screws are inserted into the distal fragment from the medial or medial ventral direction outside the anterior tendons and the dorsal musculature and a standard clamp is attached. Now the spline shaft of the desired length is fitted at one end with a two-piece sleeve, inserted into the main body of the standard clamp, and fixed tightly. This spline shaft has preferably been fitted with the sleeve for segment transport prior to the operation. It can now be aligned exactly parallel to the longitudinal axis. The spline shaft is then fixed in the correct position in the standard clamp by tightening the central screw in the saddle joint and the screw in the main body. At the other end of the spline shaft, the appropriate clamp in this case, a T-assembly can be attached to the second two-piece sleeve.
Now the shunt screws are inserted through the vice plates, which function as aiming devices. At the tibial head, it's imperative that this is carried out well outside the course of the ligamentum patelli. The insertion has to be ventral and medial of the tuberosity, and in particular, distally below it. As in all previous steps of the exercise, this insertion is done through the drill sleeve assembly. Viewed from above, the position of the screws is clearly medially and laterally beyond the ligamentum patelli. To compensate for the considerable forces at the tibial head, a third shunt screw is recommended. It is inserted through a third vice plate sufficiently distal to the tibial tuberosity. Two shunt screws are now inserted through the standard clamp into the middle section of the shaft. This middle section will later serve as the transporting component. The distal shaft is now resected. The site of the corticotomy is shown on the proximal shaft, below the tibial head. In this exercise, the corticotomy is carried out with an oscillating saw, although it is clear that clinically a corticotomy is preferably performed with the corresponding chisels taking care of the surrounding tissue. The segment transport can now be simulated by turning the large nut on the segment transport sleeve. Each full rotation of the nut corresponds to one millimeter of transport. Every full rotation, and thus each millimeter, is divided into four portions, which can be felt as the nut engages. This division is marked one to four on the nut. The segment is transported into the defect. For the final compression, or in cases where larger forces are required, the nut on the segment transport sleeve can be turned with a special hexagonal wrench. Angulation is shown in the form of a correction osteotomy in the proximal tibia shaft. The components are mounted according to the steps that have been shown previously and the mainly self-explanatory instrument sets. Angulation is achieved by means of a worm gear within the angulator. An angulation by itself would also result in a lengthening of the bone due to the eccentric center of motion. This must, as a rule, be compensated by a shortening procedure done by shortening the central body shown here on the left. Thanks to the combined movements, a carefully directed corrective angulation can be achieved. The Mephisto system includes many other single and upgrade components, some of which are shown here. With this angled piece for T-assembly, Mephisto can be used for metaphysial tibia fractures. This central body-to-ring clamp makes Mephisto compatible with the hybrid ring fixator. By using this slide-on single-pin clamp, in combination with the central body-to-tube clamp, Mephisto can be used with the AO tubular fixator.